Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. Got this uh, pretty early 2006 120 Prado here. Just we're not sure if it's a bit noisy. Clients thinking it's a bit noisier than it should be. So we've got to check out a few things. So we're just going to run through a few basics, what come to, to mind and a bit of a diagnostic. Um, car's done just under 200,000 Ks and it's had a lot of work done on it over the years. Used to go to Toyota and whatever and whatever, you know how it goes. But look, we put injectors in it, I reckon it was a few years ago now, maybe two or three, probably closer to three years ago. Could be wrong, time goes pretty quick, probably three years ago. Anyway, let's have a listen and a look at the diagnostic and uh, see what's happening, eh? So that load reading, you'll notice is quite high, but the engine's cold, so that's why you get that. Okay, so be aware. Load reading is going to be much higher when it's cold, so it's dropping down already. Coolant temp 16, it's freezing here. Let's go and have a look at those other important readings because they're probably more important because there's an issue. So, okay, it's cold, so that's why the injection volume's up. Feedback for idle, that's about normal. Can be anything up to about four, but you know, around one, two, three, whatever. It's not usually reflecting any sort of issues. Feedback for learning on zero. One, two, three, and four, we're seeing pretty good readings at coal. And those, the timing, the injection periods and stuff, sorry, um, pretty normal for a cold engine, same as the timing is also. Let's have a look at the fuel pressure and see what's happening there. It has had a suction control valve, so. Maybe it's not noisy. That actually sounds alright. Probably need some service work, I'd say. So with the fuel pressure, the, the fuel pressure needs to chase the target pretty closely, you know what I mean? So when you rev it up, it needs to go up and down. It's not going to be instant instant, but and this is why some scan tools don't work that well. If you're using text stream, the refresh rate is way too slow. I don't know what computer, and I'm not a computer expert, that's for sure, but the ones I've used, um, yeah, it's just too slow. You need to be... And there the scan tool fell down. Got this hook on it, it's meant to hook onto the uh, steering, but never seems to work out too well. That's right, we'll try and sort it out. Hopefully it stays there for a bit. Sounds pretty good actually, so happy days. We'll just go and have a look at all the other readings. And obviously this may be a monitor as it warms up situation to make sure nothing weird happens, but oh jeez, I didn't press the right buttons for too long, that'd be good. Okay, do it this way. Okay, so injection volume already down to 10 and the coolant's not going to be anywhere near probably maybe I'll be tipping it's not even going to be 50 degrees we'll check in a minute it's probably going to be at 40 degrees or something and the injection volume is down to 10 which is good one two three and four is all pretty good readings and even the timing sorry the main injection period etc is coming down let's just go and have a look at that coolant temperature and the load you can see the load's down to 20 already and like I said, the coolant temp's still 35, so correct, not even 40. So basically still a cold engine, and the readings are looking pretty good. So I'd say there's no issues here with injectors, etc. like that. Like I said, they were done not that long ago. The car doesn't do a lot of um, kilometres, but some of the issues can be exactly that. It sits around, you know. You want to keep driving the vehicle. Don't let it sit around too much. Just because you're not doing Ks, don't just not change your oil and not get it serviced. You know, the oil is the most important thing. You know, take it to someone for an oil change or do it yourself, whatever the case may be. Best thing for engines that are sitting around is to have clean oil in them. Not, oh, you know, I don't drive it much and just leave it there for a year or two. Not good. So slowly it's warming up. We're just going to monitor this on the, um, as it warms up and have a bit of a listen to it. We might even let it go cold again and have a drive of it, see if it's making any noise. I mean, it's got a K&N filter and an exhaust and, you know, it's got, what's it got? It's got a special 
special design um, busted snorkel there. How do you like that? Quality control vehicle. So, you know, if you don't respect the vehicle and look after it, I suppose it's what you're going to get, isn't it? But, um, a lot of fuel for us to deal with as well. So, anyway, that's alright. Keep it full, less condensation in your tanks. Fill it up when it's cheap. Um, so we're just going to monitor this. We'll let it warm up and we'll join another video on. Talk to you then. So if you haven't watched our other videos on diagnostics, you should go and have a look at those. And it doesn't matter if it's a Hilux or a Prado, 120, 150, whatever. Have a good look at them. Even if you've got a, you know, layer to model vehicles, the numbers might be slightly different, the injection volumes and whatever. But if you have a look at the vehicle when it's new and note what they are, right, what they are hot, what they are cold, how far they vary, you're going to be able to work out what's normal and what's not if something goes out later down the track now. So now we've got this, you can see full operating temperature, it's idling. If Look, if you didn't watch the yesterday's video, the one that goes for about 40 minutes, there's a whole lot of important information in there. Go and have a look at that. And you'll note in there that I mentioned that they idle at 83 degrees. These Toyota thermostats are unbelievably awesome, okay? Because every vehicle that comes in idles on 83 degrees. You're looking at it, that's what's happening. It might go one either way, especially in cold weather while your cooling system's really cold and some cold waters come in and just it might just momentarily drop to 82. When you drive, it's going to go up 84, 85. And then as soon as you come back to idle, if your thermostat's right, this is what you're going to see, 83, okay? Now, as I said, we did the injectors not that long ago, uh, two or three years ago. And if you note in the video yesterday, I said when the injectors are, you know, they're not new anymore, but they're not in time for replacement. They're going to be around 13, 14 now. The load we're talking about, the load. So let's have a look at that load. What is it? You can see it's not 11 or 12 anymore on this vehicle. It's around the 13 to 14 mark, right? So these injectors... Regardless, of, they haven't done a lot of Ks. They've probably only done, I don't know if they've done 20, 30, 40. Like I said, about three years. I reckon we change those maybe at 150, 160K. Now it's nearly 200. So not a lot, but it sits around, doesn't get driven a lot. It really doesn't get looked after well. This is a poorly maintained vehicle. I'm going to be honest. Poorly maintained. When people have got multiple cars, and this is just their, I'm not going to use the word kicker, sitting around for you know we're going to do some muddy trips and not clean it and not maintain it and save some money on it you're going to get back what you put into it this vehicle does not get looked after very well okay um so those injector readings not bad as far as the load goes that's what i wanted to point out the information's in yesterday's video that's a really important one for everyone to watch let's have a look at all the other important stuff so injection volume You'll note in that video, once again, and this is, these readings all align with each other. And, you know, it's good information. So, injection volume seems to be around 7 or just over 7. What did I say yesterday? On a 120 Prado with a 5-speed auto. That's what we got here. All right. What did I say? I said, you know, new injectors are going to be around about the 6 mark, give or take. Probably a bit under, but thereabouts. Once they start wearing, it's going to slowly work its way up. We're seeing seven, a bit over seven with these. Again, not bad, but just showing us. They're not new anymore. They're seven, they're not six. You know, they're 7.2 or 7.3, right? Not, not a problem. Feedback values look really good. As we said, they were a little bit higher when they were cold. So these injectors, as far as diagnostic goes, is beautiful. Now, you'll also remember in that video, if you watched it, and if you haven't, please do and subscribe and turn the bell on so you don't miss out the next important information. See Pilot 1 and Pilot 2. Remember I said 4.30 or either side of that and they're usually quite steady. See, that's what we're seeing, you know. I didn't need to script it or think about it or read a book. It's just what it is. We've been looking at them for years. 4.30. 50 either side's okay by book. I'll tell you it's not. Why isn't it? Because I've seen all sorts of new and old and everything and they don't really move much from here. So... If you've got a picture of these, um, I don't mean send me a photo. If, you, if you've got a vehicle, a picture, a diagnostic screen showing you they're out, 
probably something's going on. And all these readings, it's all related around injectors generally because it's just an engine. It's just a four-cylinder engine is all it is. And everything's controlled by fuel pressure and how those injectors are working. And there's a lot of wearing moving parts in there. Okay, so individual feedback's beautiful. Doesn't mean everything's okay. Let's work our way down. Pilot one on pilot two, beautiful. Now, the other main one, funnily enough, is called main injection period, right? On other scan tools, it might be called, you know, something similar. You know, you have to work it out. Um, as I said, about 500 is ideal. A bit over there, 500 or a bit over. Remember, these aren't you anymore. We've been talking about that. The load's up a little bit, so is the main injection period. But it's not bad. It's still within spec. We like to see it under 600. Now, this one does jump around a lot more than main. And this one's not too bad, but you'll see it's gone up to 580, down to 540. That's not bad, that's fine, I'm happy with that, no problem. They're your main readings you want to look at. Your load, your injection volume, and your main injection period, those three, okay? And your feedback values as well, but just because they're up a little bit at times doesn't mean there's a problem, as I sent, mentioned in that video. They can be up a little bit from new or even new engines. It does happen sometimes, maybe one in ten. Um, so this is... Whether it's a Prado or Hilux, this is the earlier one, 06 through to 09, so 120 Prados, same vintage in Hiluxes, but it's also relevant information to everybody else. Let's go a bit further down and have a look at the timing and see, you know, if that, that's normally about what they are, okay? All right, so that's all happy days. I'm trying to remember what the spec by the book is, I think it's 16 to 20 or something like that, so 18 would be ideal. Either way, those readings are, you know, I think the main, see the 2.7, I think that might be 2 to 4 it's meant to be. So generally they're all within spec or not far out anyway. So that's not something we look at in a big way. Fuel pressure looks pretty good as well. While we're at it, let's talk about fuel pressure. Target common rail pressure, once the engine's warm, most commonly is 35,000 kPa. And the actual fuel pressure is going to be around about what this is. This is a perfect example of what's okay. So I hope you've watched this to the end because we talked about fuel pressure as well. Um, similar in the 150, so this will probably be all vehicles. It doesn't matter if you're working on other makes and models. Same deal, you know, you've got your target and your actual and it needs to be following along closely when you rev it up and as the revs are going up and down, it needs to be steady. The other test is holding it on 3,000 revs, so we'll do that. Just getting it up there hold it steady it's important that you hold it really steady and so we've got the target we want to get the target if we hold it steady enough hopefully we can get the target staying the same we're pretty close on 67 but see the fuel pressure it's a little bit under a little bit under is fine generally you're not going to see it go over it's going to be a little bit under same as it does at idle okay so at idle it's going to eventually get back to the target at 35 there it is it's going to hover between 32 and 35, maybe 36, right? That is a perfect suction control valve. Let me tell you, take note, it does not mean there's not a problem with your suction control valve. Quite often we can look at the diagnostic screen and go, that's fine, but you've got symptoms of stalling or it's blowing a bit of smoke or it's a bit noisy or a bit sluggish and we change it and it solves your problem. I'm going to remind you again, the short compact type suction control valves are problematic even new ones out of the box you need to upgrade to the proper genuine Toyota part number they're the longer body one with the adapter a little bit harder to install but worthwhile you'll probably never change it again alright so if you've got the short one let's not talk about it just change it we've got the updated ones here on the shelf just ordered some more and um, you know the short ones replacing the long ones they're not a problem. If you've done two or 300,000 Ks and you want something else to change on your vehicle as preventive maintenance, hey, we've got those as well. You can throw one of those at it as well. A new one, of course, is going to be better than an old one. I'll give you my best example what it would be like changing a suction control. It's probably like changing... It's probably like changing a set of brake pads and rotors when they're half worn. Like There's nothing wrong with them, but of course, new brakes are going to be that little bit nicer. It's not going to make a massive difference, but I suppose that's the difference. They're brand new, fresh... 100% right I suppose like injectors really you know brand new fresh ones so that's why we put a date on it you know it's not about how long you can get out of it or what's okay it's you know when they're new and fresh and working 100% that's the best way you can be 
but you're certainly not going to put a new set in every year, two or three years, I'd hope. Some people do, every three years. Oh, we don't want that, you know what I mean? It's not about selling injectors, otherwise we'd recommend doing it every five years. There's a lot of people writing, just change them every 100,000 Ks. No, no. Look, change them at 100,000 if they're seven or eight years old. As I said, my experience has taught me that time is a better gauge than kilometers, okay? Again, there's a whole lot of variables to that. Watch the other videos. This one was meant to be on diagnostics. We're going to try and end it at that. So if you haven't already, you know the deal. Subscribe, turn the bell on, notifications, bada boom, bada bing, so you don't miss out on the next most important information coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.